Hello there, I'm Pietros Manios, and today I'm going to be reading four poems from the Greek poet C.P. Kavafi. Now this is a collection here of his work, and it's translated by Edmund Keeley and Philip Sherrard. Uh, Keeley is one of my favorite scholar writers. Um, he was at Princeton University for a long while, and I believe uh, he just retired uh, fairly recently. And he, uh, he also has a book that I'm, that I'm working on now um, titled The Greek Poets from Homer to the Present. Uh, he's one of the translators there. So, um, Kavafi. Kavafi is somewhat well known um, in the Anglo-American world. Uh, specifically, a few of his poems, uh, Ithaca, uh, Waiting for the Barbarians, uh, and Thermopylae. Um, those particular ones. So what I thought would be, would be interesting would be to choose a few of his lesser well-known poems that I really enjoy and, and share those with you. So what I've done here is I've chosen four poems from this collection here and, and I'm going to read them. So the first is titled The Bandage Shoulder. He said he hurt himself against the wall or had fallen down. But there was probably some other reason for the wounded, the bandaged shoulder. Because of a rather abrupt gesture as he reached for a shelf to bring down some photographs he wanted to look at, the bandage came undone and a little blood ran. I did it up again, taking my time over the binding. He wasn't in pain, and I liked looking at the blood. It was a thing of my love, that blood. When he left, I found in front of his chair a bloody rag, part of the dressing, a rag to be thrown straight into the garbage. And I put it to my lips and kept it there a long while, the blood of love against my lips. I really enjoy this poem, uh, particularly for the most savage emotional intensity. It's almost um, as if the final line could be excerpted from Pablo Neruda, my, my favorite poem, excuse me, poet of the, of the 20th century. Again, that line, the blood of love against my lips. Uh, it's very earthy, sensual. Uh, so I, I really enjoyed this particular poem here. Um, so let's go to the second one, which is titled, Antony's Ending. But when he heard the women weeping, Lamenting his sorry state, Madam with her oriental gestures, And her slaves with her barbarized Greek. The pride in his soul rose up, His Italian blood sickened with disgust, And all he had worshipped blindly till then, His passionate Alexandrian life, Now seemed dull and alien, And he told them to stop weeping for him, that kind of thing was all wrong. They ought to be singing his praises for having been a great ruler, so rich in worldly goods. And if he'd fallen now, he hadn't fallen humbly, but as a Roman, vanquished by a Roman. I have to admit, those final two lines uh, are perhaps my favorite uh, two lines in, in any uh, work of literature. Uh, it's a very bold statement, um, but I just love the Homeric strength, uh, especially coming you know, from the 20th century, which um, it's, it's very rarely seen. Uh, it's, it's, it's rather the exception uh, than the rule. Um, you know, contrast something like this. Well, I'll read it again. And if he'd fallen now, he hadn't fallen humbly but as a Roman, vanquished by a Roman. So strong. And uh, contrast that with something like, uh, coming from J. Alfred Prufrock, uh, do I dare disturb the universe? Um, you know. So, uh, this particular poem, again, is titled Antony's Ending. Okay, so let's go on to, which one do I want to do next? The, the third one I'll do is titled in the Tavernas. Let's go to In the Tavernas.
I wallow in the tavernas and brothels of Beirut. I didn't want to stay in Alexandria. Tamidas left me. He went off with the prefect's son to earn himself a villa on the Nile, a mansion in the city. It wouldn't have been right for me to stay in Alexandria. I wallow in the tavernas and brothels of Beirut. I live a vile life devoted to cheap debauchery. The one thing that saves me, like durable beauty, like perfume that, that goes on clinging to my flesh, is this. Tamidas, most exquisite of young men, was mine for two years, and mine, not for a house or a villa on the Nile. Again, I, I really enjoyed this. Um, it's a very decadent poem, and, and decadence is, is kind of a cliche uh, in, in the modern world. So many people are uh, obsessed with debauchery and excess and, uh, and what have you. Um, but I like this contrast because it's an admittance of decadence, yet um, it's not sort of reveling and wallowing and boasting of the decadence. Um, you know, it's a, it's a very romantic thought that, uh, that he's expressing here. Um, you know, perhaps, you know, to, you know, the, the famous statement of Oscar Wilde, you know, perhaps Mr. Cavafy is in the gutter here uh, in his life, but he's uh, at least looking up at the stars and, and remembering uh, to meet us here. Uh, so, I, again, it's a, it's a very uh, nostalgic, romantic work there. And let's, <clears throat> let's finish with he had come there to read. He had come there to read. Two or three books lie open, books by historians, by poets. But he read for barely ten minutes, then gave it up, falling half asleep on the sofa. He's completely devoted to books, but he's twenty-three and very good-looking. And this afternoon, arrows entered his ideal flesh, his lips. An erotic warmth entered his completely lovely flesh. With no ridiculous shame about the form the pleasure took. And why I chose this poem is, um, for me, uh, it's, it's a recurring uh, theme that when I try to focus on uh, the life of the mind, the intellectual life, uh, invariably, there's distractions, be it just a, the, the daily uh, responsibilities of life, or, or here you're distracted by um, idoni, or, or as uh, translated would be sensual pleasure, um, you know, be it in the form of the liar, or uh, be it in the form of another, another flesh, you know, chasing sensual pleasure. So um, I really identified uh, with this poem, and again, uh, having the best of intentions. For an intellectual life, but, but falling falling far short. So um, those are the four that I chose, and I and I highly encourage all of you to go out and get uh, this this book here again. It's C. P. Cavafy collected poems, uh, and this translation is by Edmund Keeley, Philip Sherard, and I thank you very much for tuning in, and I'll be seeing you all very soon. Take care. Bye.